Ripple me this, riddle me that, 2394, you'd better hold on to your hats. Hey folks, Sam I am here and I've been working on this all morning and this afternoon and we've put together quite a few more clues. We're going to run through those and uh, you know, a really big one that I think if you've read the title you've got an idea of what it is, but we'll get to that last. I'm going to make y'all suffer through the finer details. Okay, uh, a lot of information coming from different sources. So I had some YouTube commenters point several things out, uh, the Discord group, and uh, as well as some people from Twitter sharing some things, sending them my way. Uh, so one of the first things that you guys pointed out was right here. Uh, a lot of people think that these coins are kind of set up as a scatter graph. And of course, you'll notice XRP is not sort of in the group and I think that it's represented up here by the Knight's Shield, the X for XRP. Uh, we've also got the government hand right here that's from the original castle pick over here that used to be holding the puppet. Uh, he's now turning the crank. And I thought about this. I'm like, why is the government cranking out altcoins? And so if you remember going back to our earlier discussions about Tier 1, XRP being Tier 1 money and government still needing a Tier 2 money, that they could control and inflate as they overspend. Perhaps that's a, a suggestion that that's what's happening. Not really sure about that, but you'll also notice most of these coins are in uh, are black. They don't. They're not in color. A handful of them are. I think ADA, Cardino, Monero. I, I don't know all the symbols. I apologize, but I think Bearable Guy is giving us sort of a a nod as to the ones he thinks that are going to do well uh, and also letting us know the ones that are not going to fare so well. So take a look at that. If you, if you like, take it for what it's worth. Um, let's see. So also you guys pointed out <clears throat> a couple key things over here. One is the grouping of the flags. Now, again, this one represented Bitcoin, XRP, and the US dollar. And you'll notice Bitcoin's over here under the gavel where we've also got this jar of molasses up here. Um, and meanwhile, Brad or the Knight and uh, XRP and the US dollar are sitting under the White House. So I think that's kind of telling us they're strategically placed and they're, uh, they're, they have a measure of importance to them being connected to the White House. Of course, we know Ripple uh, met with um, the president's staff or something at the White House recently. So there is a, certainly a connection there. <clears throat> now, over here, let's see, I talked about, let me switch myself back over. I talked about the uh, this being a possibly a pack of code that SWIFT is going to have to... Um, implement somehow. I'm not certain about that. That may just be shading on the presence. It may not. Uh, I, I'm going to say I was wrong, most likely about Swift Plus. I've figured out what that means. We're going to explain that. You guys are going to probably really like it. Um, so that probably indicates that maybe he's either got some work to do to, to make all this stuff happen. He's been given a job to go and do perhaps around Christmas or he's just trying to throw a monkey wrench in the plans. We, we don't know. Uh, but you'll also notice there's one present over here that's unwrapped. And there's green inside and it kind of looks like money. So I don't know about you guys, but we always did a Christmas Eve present growing up. You'd get to open one present and it looks like that's what this is. So I think they might be telling us something's coming Christmas Eve. We've got a lot of other indications lining up. Uh, now, we also have at the top of this chart, what I, I pointed out, these look a little odd. This, to me, looks like dice. So there's two right there and one right there. We've also had Bearable Guy holding the, saying the die is cast, one, two, and three showing. I think this is telling us the 21st. So this thing might kick off or the, the early stages of it might start happening on the 21st. Now, on the Christmas tree, we've got two weird blobs. I think one looks like Malta and the other one maybe Italy. Uh, Malta, of course, being, you know, we've talked about that many times, being sort of a cryptocurrency epicenter for the world. 
and uh, Italy has uh, the Target 2 system. It was developed by a conglomerate of Italian banks, uh, and it was rolled out to Europe. When they hit the button, it was a uh, like four European bank or four Italian banks that started processing transactions. So they were certainly at the center of it, and I think that's telling us maybe something related to the Target 2 system, the SPV, the Special Purpose Vehicle, that we've heard the European Union and Russia and others talk about in order to trade oil with Iran and skirt the uh, U.S. SWIFT sanctions. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me go, let me go over here. Actually, let's jump in um, to the browser. I've got to switch some things around. So several of you pointed out this book is on the top bookshelf in the middle, Reframing Financial Regulation. Uh, I think it's, it's enhancing uh, stability and protecting consumers. So I talked about kind of a new framework for regulation. We've now got a hint of a book called Reframing Financial Regulation. Imagine that. Okay, uh, now the file name of the uh, Bearable Guy 123 Riddle, if you download this file it, and then Google search it, you will find uh, whoops, this page right here, which is a list of world remittances as part of the World Bank site. And if you take in further, do I did some further searches uh, on the World Bank group and found these, but I don't think that they're quite related. Okay, next clue, the Advent calendar. This is a calendar that usually sometimes starts late November, but it's usually uh, 24 days, and we used to get these as a kid. There was, it was like a cardboard box thing, and you'd pull open the doors, and there'd be a piece of chocolate inside, and you get to eat a piece of chocolate every day for 24 days until Christmas. And if we go back to the puzzle here, Give me just a second, guys. I've got a lot of windows to kind of manage around here. Um, okay, if we go back here and we zoom in and we come here, you'll notice the white letters start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, and then, ah, crap. Let me redo that. And then 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23. So it stops at Christmas Eve and doesn't have a 24. So I think what we may, what we're possibly being told is this starts on the 21st and sort of culminates on the 24th on Christmas Eve. <coughs> and that's the tie-in. We still don't know what the red versus yellow is here. Maybe... Huh, maybe something to do with Swift up here in the coloring matching. So, and we still haven't figured out these numbers yet. Uh, we're working on that. Okay, I want to go one last thing. This is, a, I think, a key one. And this is the um, Discord group. Some A few folks in there got together and kind of hashed this out. And related to molasses, and some people brought this up when we originally did the... Uh, when I did the video on specifically this puzzle. Uh, but I want to switch back over here, give me just a second, and talk about the Great Molasses Floods. So this happened in Boston, and you can see from the picture, a shit ton of molasses went and just flooded the streets. It killed 21 people, injuring 150. This was a serious deal. There was a tank storing a massive amount. There's damage done to the railway. Uh, there's a just this massive flood of molasses from this tank that ruptured. And I think what can happen is pressure can build up uh, because of the fermentation going on in the pressure in the vessel. And it caused massive damages and this brought about regulation. Okay. So the molasses jar going back here and let me switch us back over could be saying that price will pop off and it will spill out ev everywhere and it will create a need for molasses 
or not molasses for <laughs> regulation. Okay. And another thing that a lot of people are concerned about, and I've gotten some questions about this as well, that the discord group was discussing earlier is we're at like, we're under 50 cents right now. If Kitchero's thing comes true in the next few days, and all of a sudden we find ourselves at $50, that's going to create a huge cash crunch on the exchanges that all of a sudden have to cash out massive amounts of US dollar fiat. And they may not be able to do it. Uh, we may have a Mt. Gox situation. If you don't know what that is, that was the early days of Bitcoin when there were just so many signups and they ended up uh, you know, getting involved in fraud and not keeping track of everything and just... It was a mess and a lot of people lost money. But I think what this could be suggesting is that it's going to be such a sudden surge of price um, that the exchanges may shut down and some of them may go bankrupt and some of them may not open back up. So the suggestion is, and again, I'm interpreting the riddles. I'm not giving you financial advice. You guys are adults. Make your own decisions. You get to be adults if you're watching my videos. Um, this, this is for entertainment purposes only. I think it would be a very, very good idea for you to get your XRP off of the exchange. I'm going to leave a little bit on, but it's not a huge percentage at all. Um, I'm probably going to leave a little bit on with some sell orders out there so that if something like this does happen and I, and we get some kind of ridiculous surge in price, I'll be able to benefit from it. And if the exchanges are shut down for, uh, you know, a few days, a few weeks. Some people are talking a few months, uh, it, like until May. I don't see that at all. I think that's ridiculous uh, that they would be closed that long. They'd just be giving up too much money. Um, but, it, you know, a month might not be out of the out of the question or out of the realm of possibilities. But I think that's what he's telling us with the whole molasses and regulation and the price and that whole thing is building up pressure. It's going to cause a flood. Uh, the price is going to skyrocket. That's going to cause a flood. And then regulations are going to be brought in as the gavel falls. Okay. On to, oh, also uh, several people have suggested, well, the bookcase, that could be Amazon. Very possible. Is that what's going to kick things off? Uh, I don't know. I'm not convinced of that fact yet. Okay, let me just look around here. Now we've got this May date right here where the sun is shining brightly behind May. Uh, right around, you know, right behind the first, I think it is. Let's actually take a look at that. So yeah, we're right over the first of May. It's kind of the month of May, is, in my view, is highlighted. Okay. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. So I took a look at this, a closer look at this right here. And I figured out what these are. So first off, this is a dollar sign. And if you remember the 589 prediction, the original one, it had dollar sign plus 589 end of year, I think, or 589 plus end of year 2018. Um, and now we have a dollar sign and we have a plus sign over here. And I figured out what these are. This is 589 and they're all upside down. That's what the arrows are showing us. So what he's saying is 589 has been turned upside down, turned on its head, essentially. Uh, is it happening? Is it not happening? When is it happening? I don't really know. Um, but I think what he's showing us with 5, 8, 5 plus 8 plus 9 plus 1 divided by 1 is 23. 5 plus, or 8 plus 9 plus 1 divided by 2 is 9. The 6 right here is, um, he's saying not turned over, so that's 6. And I think he's telling us 2396 plus. And I think his date for this is probably May 2019. And so I talked about the two things going on. We've got R3 most likely coming with who knows what else. 
but that we've also got the big global financial system that's really been, you know, has so many moving pieces that was supposed to have happened or we're supposed to be in the middle of it. It's not happening. I think it's been pushed out to May. And that's what we're being, uh, being told here. So that, uh, that's huge. Now, again, I know the haters are already going to, oh, they're going to lose their shit over this. I don't really care. This is not my prediction. This is me interpreting the puzzle as it's presented, as I understand it. If you can't comprehend that, this channel is not for you. Find the little X and click on it and move the fuck on. I'm not going to deal with it. This is what I'm being shown. This is how I'm interpreting the puzzle. This is bearable guy's prediction. It's not mine. It's what I'm seeing though. Uh, okay. One last thing that I missed out on here. Uh, this code converts and let me, I plugged it in here into a base 64 and got all war three. <clears throat> I took that term, Google searched it and found this. And I took a excerpt of that right here. Took Bala Kila, the Fort of Alwar, 23rd of November, 1775, and established himself as an independent ruler. Now, you go back, November 20th was a key date for us. And I, I think I even remember saying on the 22nd or 23rd that it seems like Temenos has gone live. We saw like a bump in volume and uh, I kind of suspected maybe there was something going on there. Uh, this date kind of lines up with that. Uh, now it goes on to say rewarded with, uh, an Imperial mansab, whatever that is granted to the, granted the hereditary title of Rao Raja, uh, the 25th of December, 1775. So we're given the 23rd when I actually from previous videos thought Temenos went live and the 25th of December, which is you know, a Christmas puzzle, what this thing is uh, all about in the first place. So to me, that's what this box over here, this is saying out of the box, uh, Nostro accounts are going to be moving into the cloud. And of course the T24 and Temenos, they talk about, they play up big that they've got a cloud based solution for banks. Uh, and of course the banks, they install the software and then boom, they get this, uh, XRP liquidity functionality available to them. Now it could be also a tie in with Swift because they also have, uh, some cloud based functionality that they've been implementing. There's a video where they're talking about AI. Uh, and I even think that the X pool manager that I've talked about, uh, might, one day use AI and it could be in the sandbox being tested right now. Uh, and that's, that was in the, the Swift video where the guy was talking about AI. He was talking about the sandbox and he was talking about, uh, the cloud and, and having their, their software and functionality based in the cloud. So there you go. We still don't know what these numbers are. Uh, the red and yellow are probably tying into the, the IF up here. Um, let me think. I think I don't can't remember if I covered the puppet. So let's go back and do that just to make sure. The arm that's still hanging on to the board. Um, this part of it is labeled IMF, and this part up here is like CX dollar sign. It, the hand is one, and then it's CX dollar sign uh, Z percent. And I think that's maybe somehow referencing uh, pairing XRP with uh, the SDR. And that's why the IMF is sort of hanging on to this process. And this check may be more than just the puppet. It may be that this whole castle thing, the change out of the dollar is check. It's underway. The, the puppet strings have been cut. Swift has been dethroned and we're bringing about the new solution. So there you go. Uh, let me just look around here before I let you guys go. I think that is it. We talked about the position of these guys with the white house versus BTC with the regulations that the government may be turning out their own coins, that this could be some kind of scatter graph. The question would be, what are the axis 
the axes? Um, is it value? Is it utility? Is it use case uh, compared with price or what? I, I don't know. But something in there, certainly. Uh, of course, the scepter is on the fire being fired. And yeah, I think that's it. So there you go. Oh, and of course, the um, Ouroboros means a perpetual process. There's a plus here and a minus here, just like in the last puzzle that had the Ouroboros meaning. I'm not sure what the plus and minus means. But again, that this is an, just an ongoing eternal process. And of course, it, the two snakes makes the infinity symbol. That's an alchemy uh, symbol and so forth. So we talked about, again, the big thing I think that's in this puzzle is 589 has been turned upside down. And now we're looking at 2396 by May. Not my prediction. I'm not giving you financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. You guys be smart about this. Don't make stupid decisions. Don't uh, go out and invest more than you can afford to lose. Don't buy on margin or leverage, you know, do the best you can. But again, you're responsible for you. That's the end of the day. That's, that's the way the world works. So, all right, guys, uh, when we crack these codes and maybe fill in some more pieces here, I will uh, be back with another update. Hope you enjoyed this. I will catch you all next video.